This is a description of the setup for using straight chloroform to introduce a sample into the mass spec. And uh, let me go over the components, starting with the syringe pump. So this is our typical syringe pump. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's infusion only, so it's relatively cheap, about 300 bucks. And this one's been modified so that when it gets down to the end, it's going to press against this switch, and the uh, lights will come on, indicating to the user that ah, it's not pumping anymore. Mm -hmm. right. And then we have our flask gas tight syringe. Right. So let me pull this out. All right, so it's a Hamilton syringe, 5 ml, gas tight number 1005. And then that's hooked, connected by this Valco connector. So that is this part here. And then it's hooked, it's connected to a filter that has uh, replaceable frits, and so this part is that. Got two of those. That's what the filter looks like in the pack. Right, let me look at the uh, filter. Has these cute little replaceable frits, mm -hmm. uh, ten microns. Mm -hmm. So that's to filter the solvent, and then we have a connection with. Um, fuse silica tubing. Mm -hmm. So, fuse silica tubing is from Polymicro TSP 150 slash 350 fuse silica tubing, 10 meters in uh, 2017 costs about $180. All right, the 150 refers to the ID in microns, the OD. Right. And so, if you're in the English system, it's about Five thousandths of an inch ID, fifteen thousandths of an inch OD, a little bit less. And uh, so the brown stuff is the tubing, so this is the tubing. And then for the adapter, use Teflon tubing. So use that. The Teflon tubing has an inside diameter of a hundred and fifty of a Fifteen thousandths, so it will, so the fuse silica tubing will slide into the Teflon tubing, and then I like to use these uh, double-sided ferrules and uh, stainless steel finger-tight connectors. Uh, they're made by SSI. I think Fisher sells them in the U.S. So, uh, so so far. All the chloroform is going to see so is going to be the Teflon on the plunger, stainless steel, uh, fused silica, and then it makes its way to uh, the classic 7125 Riodine valve. Okay. And then this has been set up. So we have a 3 microliter loop. And it's a 6 port injection valve. And uh, the solvent makes its way to, this is what's going to be connected to the mass spec. Mm -hmm. So next we'll take it up and hook it up to the mass spec. So the system is uh, on the cart right now just for convenience as far as uh, moving it around and uh, keeping it out of harm's way. Uh, the sample is going to be in the typical gas tight, blunt nose, 25 microliter syringe, and the sample will go through the needle guide like that, and then be introduced and undoubtedly overfill the three microliter loop. And then you'll have injection by moving it that way. So let me, uh, let's get up 
to the front end of the mass spec and show how that connection works. So, wheeled up the syringe pump, uh -huh. and then what, what's going to happen is that this connection is going to be, well, the HPLC pump is turned off, alright, so this is the, what would be the flow, this would be the flow from HPLC column, or the pump, uh -huh. and then it's just a matter of hooking up, it's a matter of hooking up, this guy here, and since the pressure is relatively low, um, let me pause this. It's easier with two hands to make this connection, and this is a typical up church finger type connection. And so, if we go back over the system. We have our chloroform going through the filter, making its way through six port injection valve. And then over here is the flow out. That's into the injection and makes its way to the electrospray source. There's a little bit of Teflon tube in here as it actually makes its way. Uh, to the source needle and then uh, to the mass spec. And why go through the trouble of having a manual injection valve and a syringe pump? Uh, well, there is great reluctance in our good HPLC for solvent pump to be putting chloroform in here. Um, what it would do to seal on a long-term basis and that uh, chloroform is not acetonitrile. It's uh, definitely more aggressive in my opinion. And then the other thing, the other item is the chlor what the chloroform would leach from the peak tubing. Uh, who knows? So in, in this setup, all of chloroform is going to see uh, are some occasional Teflon surfaces stainless steel, and fused silica. Uh, this is a waste container. Right. And uh, so if anything goes wrong, then replacing a Rheodyne valve or uh, a $300 syringe pump, although this is, the chloroform is not going to see the, um, the gas pipe. 5 ml syringe, definitely less than 100 bucks. Reodyne valve, uh, that's in the range nowadays, probably about 700 to 1,000. Uh, there are Japanese clones that are about 400 bucks. So, um, and this seems to have held up well, I would say, with. Uh, so far, roughly about two days exposure to chloroform. So, this is the setup for having a sample dissolved in salt and chloroform and making its way then to the electrospray source for some uh, getting some mass spec data. And if, uh, as far as the, the this syringe pump and the modification, there's a, a YouTube video on that as far as what this is. Uh, I, I pref the advantages of this syringe pump are they're relatively inexpensive and uh, can be modified. At least I was able to modify it fairly cheaply and uh, then this does not become a syringe pressure uh, when it bottoms out because what happens is that this, when it hits the switch, then diverts the action and uh, the LEDs, especially to get blinking LEDs, will let you know that, oh, pumping is stopped. 
typical flow for this is on the order of uh, two mils an hour.